So right now our app is technically a Facebook app, but with no access to the social graph data. This is not necessarily a bad thing. You can create a fully functional app that doesn't require any kind of authentication and is visible to everyone on Facebook. But the beauty of Facebook is that you can have access to this data. In this movie, I'm gonna show you how to initialize and load the JavaScript SDK. So let's go to the developers page on Facebook at developers.facebook.com. And I'm gonna click on build apps on Facebook. And then I'm gonna open up the SDK reference, which is right there. I need to pick my SDK, which in this case is the JavaScript SDK. I'll click on that. And you'll see that it gives you a lot of information about the core methods and other functions that you could use when you have the JavaScript SDK loaded. Now, the first thing that you'll need to do on any app is to make sure you initialize the SDK, and this is how Facebook wants you to do it. So to initialize a Facebook page, we generally place this code after the opening body tag, but we have a slightly different structure in our project. I don't really want everything to be on one page, so the way that I've organized my application is by creating a JavaScript and a CSS folder inside and underscore folder. So we're gonna need to change things a little bit. I already have my code snippets.txt file, and one of the things that we need to do is open up my script.js file on our server. So I'll do that. And we'll go back into code snippets, and we'll grab our version of these two functions. So we'll grab all those right there, go back into my script.js and paste them. I'll go ahead and save and I'll show you what's going on here. This is the part of this code that loads the JavaScript SDK asynchronously. That really big word just means that it's loading it in the background as the rest of the page is loading. Whenever it's ready, it's gonna fire up an additional function called window.fb async init. So once the function finishes loading the JavaScript SDK, it's gonna execute this other function, and this other function is going to try to initialize the SDK. It's going to need a couple of things, your app ID as well as your domain.com here for a channel file. So let's get the app ID and I'll talk about the channel URL later. So you can get your app ID by going back to the developers page and then clicking on this apps link on the top right. When we get here, since this is the only app we have, it's the one that's showing up right now. Now you can just click on this link right here and it'll show the app that you want. Now we need this right here, which is our app ID slash API key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. And then I'm gonna go back into BB Edit, my code editor, and make sure that I replace this app ID with the app ID from that page. So I'm gonna hit save. There is one more thing that we need. If we go back into the SDK, and let's go back by hitting the back button a couple of times into the reference JavaScript. Notice that there's an additional little line that I didn't copy. And this is a special div that should appear on any page that has Facebook data called FB root. So we'll need to add that into our HTML. I'm gonna go back into my text editor and back into transmit because I need to open my index.php file. So I will open that up, go into my code snippets, and I'll grab this FB root div. Now this div is what Facebook uses when it needs to draw something onto the screen. So we need to make sure it's somewhere on the page. So I'll just add it right next to the body tag. Doesn't really matter where it is as long as it's somewhere. Looks like these aren't tabbed exactly. So let me go ahead and tab these. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna save that. And we've got most of the things that we need ready to go. There's another thing that you need to know about and that is this thing called the channel URL file. So if we go back into Facebook and read the initializing documentation, so back to the JavaScript SDK, we'll see that there's a section here that talks about the channel file. This channel file is a file that addresses some problems that used to happen with cross-domain communications in some browsers. It used to happen to me a lot, so this is really cool. I'm glad they added this. And what you need to do is essentially create an HTML file with this single line. If you read a little bit further, you'll notice that they recommend that this file be cached properly, and they give you a little bit of code right here, and that's what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna go back into my text editor and grab this next piece of code. This is just the code from Facebook, and I'm gonna copy it to my clipboard, and I'm gonna need to create a new file. Now, remember that they suggested that you call the file index.html. You're actually gonna create a file called index.php. Why? Because we added a little bit of pH code at the beginning of the file. I'll call this channel.php. 
and I'm going to open that up, and I'll paste that code in there. Because we have added a bit of PHP at the beginning of this page, we need to make sure that our extension is .php. Some servers will not process PHP files unless they're named .php. So I'm going to save that, and I'm going to go back into my script file and make sure that I put in the right location of our channel file, which will be our domain, which is iviewsource.com slash channel.php. And I'll save this file. Now, there's one more thing that I want to do. This is sort of optional, but it's something I like very much. And this is adding a frictionless request option to our initialization code. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back into my script file and just put this somewhere in here. I'll just add it right there. I'm going to format it a little bit better. So let's go into Safari and take a look at frictionless requests. It's actually part of dialogues. When you go here, if you do a search for frictionless requests, I'll just do it a couple of times, right about in the middle of the page, there's a good explanation of why these are important. Many times when a user is within an app, they can make requests to their friends for certain things. So you could say, hey, uh, Joe, I want to play a game with you or check out my high score. And frictionless requests allow you to send additional requests once you've sent a user a request already without having to see another dialog box. So it kind of streamlines the process of sharing with friends by not making you have to see a box every time you send something to somebody. And that definitely makes things a little more efficient. So let's go back into our app and just reload. Everything should be fine. Nothing is really happening differently right now. But we have, with these lines of code, loaded the JavaScript API. Once you loaded the JavaScript API, you can check and see whether or not a user has logged into your app. And we'll do that next.